Start making money today with your coding skills. Get started on Fiber with the first link in the description down below. So the first one is gonna be string manipulation. This is a very good one. As the name suggests, what this does, basically it allows you to manipulate any string. Once we have a text selected, we can search for a string inside our command palette and we have a bunch of options. Let's just say that we wanted to slugify it and now we have a slugged version of it. Let's just say that we wanted to camelize it we can cambalize it. Let's just say that we wanted to have it a snake cased again. And now we have it. Just search for string. And then over here, you'll see a bunch of options. Humanize, prune, repeat, reverse. Let's just click on over here, reversed. And now this is reversed. This is a very handy extension that I use on a daily basis. So yeah, go check it out. The second one is going to be import cost by Wix and this one is going to let you know what's the import cost of each package that you are using. So let's just go inside this project. So it says that the import cost of course is 5 and then zipped is 2.1. This is kind of handy if you want to be aware of what's the cost of each package and what's going to be the size. So this is mostly used for front-end apps where you don't want to import like packages that are very heavy if you don't have to. And we can see that this is the import cost of this uh, library. UUID has a cost of 1.2, which is actually not bad. So yeah, it's a very handy tool. It's gonna let you know what's the size of each of your imports. So just for reference, I've imported Lodash over here and you, you can see that this is the import size. So yeah, this is mainly used for front-end apps where you wanna be aware of what you're shipping and you don't want to send a bunch of extra JavaScript that you're not going to be using. So yeah, very cool extension. Go check it out. Uh, next one is going to be One Dark Pro. And this is a theme that I've been using for a bunch of years. And it's pretty cool. As you can see, it looks very nice. And it has some different options. You have Italic, the default one, and then the flat theme. And over here, you have a bunch of options. So One Dark Pro, you have this one, Darker, Flat, Mix, and that's about it. You get four of them. I normally use the default one, One Dark Pro, and that one looks very cool. And I think it's pretty nice. For me, I just like One Dark Pro. If I'm using something like JetBrain software, I also have this same extension. Also inside Insomnia, I'm using the same one, One Dark Pro. I think it's one of the better looking ones and also looks very cool on YouTube. And the next one is gonna be related to the previous one, which is Material Icon Theme. And this one is a pack of icons and they all of these look very nice. The default ones are okay, but if you go over here, you can see that these ones change a bit. You see the JSON over here, the JavaScript, the package.json, and over here routes, you get this direction symbol. So yeah, it's, it's okay. It's one of the, I think one of the better looking ones. And as you can see, they have a bunch of options over here. They have Byte, they Netflify, they have a bunch of them. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's one of those ones. And as you can see, it also changes the folder icon depending on the name. So if you have something like API, it's gonna change it to this. If you have something like Nuxt, it's, it's gonna have that icon. As you can see also view, view dire directives. I'm pretty sure you can also change like the names for these ones. So yeah, this is the one that I've been using for a bunch of years. The combination of One Dark Pro and Material Icon Theme, I think is one of the better ones. It's also very simple. You don't have to really customize a bunch of stuff. You just download it and it just looks awesome. So yeah, this is a combination that I love and I've been using for a bunch of years. Next up, we have Thunder Client. I think this is one of the most popular ones, Thunder Client. It works very well. I normally use something like Insomnia. So let's just go check it out first, uh, Thunder Client. So you'll have it over here. And then you can create a new request and you can just send and you have basically everything working inside VS Code. This is, I think, pretty cool and it does what it needs to. But also at the same time, I just prefer something different because not all of the time I'm going to be using something like VS Code. Sometimes I might be using something like WebStorm, PHP Storm or other IDEs. So the fact that this is a VS Code extension, it's one of those uh, deal breakers for me. But also at the same time, if you're just going to be using VS Code for everything, I think this is one of the those extensions that you should download because it's pretty cool and it's totally free and it's just super powerful. It works very well. You have over here all of the basics options. You, you have query params, headers, authorization. You can select any of the most popular ones, most likely you're going to be using something like Burr. And over here you can pass the token 
and that's gonna be added over here you can also change the prefix so that's also pretty cool and you can of course change the body and pass maybe a json which is already selected by default and you can over here start adding and you have it and i as I can see that they have a format option, which is also pretty cool. And then you can send. They also have tests, which is something I think pretty new. They didn't have it before. So they are adding more stuff. And over here, you can check the result. Another thing that I really like about Thunder Client is this option over here that they allow you to generate a code. And you can over here select uh, any language. So let's just go with JavaScript. And it's just going to allow you to use, uh, let's just go with fetch or Axios by default. And it's just going to give you a bunch of code that just works by default. It's just grabbing this and putting it over here inside the fetch. It's passing the params and the headers and everything. So you can just copy this and it will work. It's going to work as the same as the other ones. Let's just select Node.js. And over here is going to use HTTPS and it's going to basically do all of the same so yeah this one is pretty cool insomnia doesn't have this so yeah uh, a bonus for that if you're only going to be using vs code definitely go check out thunder client i think is one of the best ones next up we have auto rename tag and as the name suggests what this is going to do is going to change the pair tag to the one that you're changing so let's just go ahead and have a look over here i have a script let's just say that i wanted to have something like heather or body span and as you see is also changing the other one i can also disable this so that's gonna reload it and also now what's gonna happen is that this is not gonna work if i say it's script over here this didn't change so i have to copy paste it and it used to be that you had to download one of those extensions to, to get that feature but now if you go under settings and you search this editor linked editing and you enable it so now you can come over here and let's just say that i wanted to change it back to a span now i have it and it's just using this feature so yeah you can either choose to download the extension or just copy this inside settings and enable this and you're gonna get the exact same feature next up we have one of those that it's a lifesaver as developers we end up adding a bunch of to do's and they normally look something like this to do fix this and keeping track of all of them it just becomes kind of hard so an extension like to do tree or something like to do highlight both of them they are do kind of the same but i like better to do tree i think this one is actually better so what it this does is very simple you just have to add a to do you have to add it inside a comment that's the only caveat so to do and over here you can say fix this and now if i come over here inside this tree and over here i have that to do and i can just go directly and let's just say that i had another one let's just say that i have over here fix this too and we have both of them over here and i can just jump between files and also between to do's very quickly you can also add other ones like something like fix me and that's actually ch gonna change it and it says fix me and then the comment so you have all of these options over here you can go check them out so by default you have bug hack fix me to do and you can even add more so what you can do is come over here under settings type this and you can click over here and you can start adding more so let's just say that i wanted to do hack i can come over here and i just can add that and that's gonna add it over there so we can add more we have fix me hack and bug let's just try also bug and that's gonna work the same way as you can see it's changing and we can even change the colors and everything so yeah go check it out definitely is one of those that it's a lifesaver and it's pretty cool next up we have colorize and as the name suggests this is related with colors so if you work a lot with css files and you want to know what's the representation of each of these values the hexadecimal values or any other colors this is a very cool one so i have an example over here and we have color and this is by default vs code provides you with this color picker as you can see over here is being highlighted with that color so if i change it to something like this this is actually gonna change and this is very handy if you have i don't know a lot of other stuff you can over here change the representation if you you wanted to it also works with rgba if we wanted to 
and as you can see over here it just works the same way we can change the color and it's just gonna work and i think it looks pretty cool we can change this and i think it just looks way better than something like this it might be a little bit more distracting but if that's something that you don't want to have you can also disable it but for me this one it's a one that i really like and now we have one of my favorite ones it's gonna be live server this is one that i've been using for years ever since i started coding i think this is one of the first ones that i installed so once you have it installed you can just come over here and you have this button go live so now we have a live server and what we can do is just change this and it's just gonna refresh and we don't have to refresh the page it's gonna listen for changes and every single time that we make a change it's gonna refresh we can see the changes reflected over there so i think this is one of those for people who are working with html a lot of with html because nowadays all of the other frameworks have hot module reload so you don't really need this but if you're working with html files i think this is one of those that you have to have because it's just very handy next up we have git lens i think this is one of those that should come just vs code by default 70 million downloads so yeah a bunch of downloads so what this does basically it allows you to mainly what i use it for it just allows me to see who did what at what moment and as you can see over here we have this and it says you two minutes ago and the comment for that commit is hey subscribe so <laughs> you might as well just go and subscribe but yeah this is a very handy one so if you go under that extension they're gonna have a bunch of features that i don't really use i just normally use it for what i just showed you so it's just gonna let me know who, who did this comment and at what moment and it's not very intrusive so you just have it over here as a very subtle comment and i just commented this and it says hey subscribe for more awesome coding tutorials so yeah as you can see it's very powerful it's gonna allow me to see who did what at what moment 30 seconds ago and over here four minutes ago so yeah go check it out git lens i think you should just have it downloaded by default it's just very very useful and now it's time to talk about the bonus ones and for me one of my favorite ones is head wind and basically it formats your tailwind css classes if you're working with tailwind css i think this is one of those that it's just a lifesaver because it just becomes very chaotic maintaining an order with the Win CSS classes or maybe you might not even think about it but it, the fact that there's an extension that does it for you I think it's just very very awesome and this one is headwind and then we have dot env this is another one that I think it should come by default with VS Code I don't know why VS Code doesn't have it and basically highlights dot m files and nowadays if you're working with a front-end framework or a back-end framework you're gonna have dot m files so having this one it's also very handy it just works very well another one is gonna be JetBrains IDE key map I also work a lot with JetBrain software, WebStorm, PHP Storm, and having something like this, it allows me to use JetBrain key maps inside VS Code. If you work with JetBrain software, I think this is one of those that's gonna be also very useful because it's just those key maps inside VS Code. So yeah, pretty awesome. And that was it. I'm gonna ask you to do something, which is let me know how many of these extensions are you using right now and how many of these you didn't even know about so yeah go ahead and comment that in the comment section down below also go ahead and check out fiber if you want to make some extra money coding freelancing i think it's one of those that is very simple to get started and you can make upwards of hundreds and thousands of dollars on fiber i've made a bunch of money on fiverr so yeah go check it out there's gonna be a first link in the description all of these extensions are gonna be linked in the description down below you know what to do like share subscribe and see you in the next one bye